Good Moed Raboisai. Ah! This shear is given tonight here in Chicago. It's nighttime. It's only the fourth day of Sphere. I'm not going to say the real because we didn't have a Mayer. Uh, by the time uh, people in Arctic Stroll see the shear, it's going to be the seventh day in the Sphere. And therefore, no longer Yantif. It's not really good money. It's good morning. Um, so, we got a, a, a few really nice emails. There's a bunch of them. In case you thought I was going to run out of emails for Tushirim today, I have probably left over 20 emails that I received today alone and not, not showing them. Being able to attend the Nozicium in Chicago with my son was a wonderful experience, or should I actually say the start of a wonderful experience. There are now three generations in our family who are involved with Dafiyomi thanks to the incredible Nozer Art Collection book. My son's five and eight-year-old children are very interested in discovering the meaning behind these ingenious illustrations and enjoy learning and reviewing the basics of Nozicium can be seen in the enclosed photo which I didn't have time to put in here. Thanks again, the Lowenstein family. P.S. I hope you'll consider publishing more editions you can purchase on the MDY merch site. Ben Kazinik. I love you very much. I love you very much. Dear Bill, I love you very much. Again, I love you very much. Thanks to your awesome sheer. I finished not one, but two mesechtes, brachas and shabbos, first time in my life. I've been from for 10 years, and I've learned Hasidus, but I've never been able to get into Gemara until now. Not sure what else to say. Love everything you and the team are doing. Thanks, Ben. You're an awesome, I can cheer. I'll, I'll repeat that four times also. And I absolutely love listening to you, no matter what mood I'm in. This is from Tzvi Kurtz. You guys know Tzvi Kurtz? Yeah. I still have warm memories of playing basketball with you in the JCC at 9 a.m. Sunday morning and stealing the ball from you in an open court, but then missing the wide open layup. At the other end, I still remember you explained to me why wearing one shirt over his head when saying shahakal and drinking water wasn't the chathila. I mean, I, I don't know why. Maybe you could tell me. A minute 22 of Sayyid Daf Yud Alav, you mentioned that you remember Gemara somewhere about E of being fictional. The Gemara appears in Baba Basra Daf Tesvav, six lines from the bottom in the midst of a sugya that has nine opinions about when E of lived. So here's the thing. I did Chazorah on Masechus Baba Basra 22 times. 20 times, 22, I don't remember anymore. And it's part of the problem. That even though I learned Baba Basra 20 times, I still don't remember Baba Basra at all. And here's another problem. I don't remember who Tzvi Kurtz is. I'm not kidding. It sounds so familiar. I know that I know him. Maybe Tzvi will send me a picture. I'm Amish. I'm... It's, it's going slowly. Although the Gemara seems that this Manda Omar gets slugged up because the author of Eve goes to great length to detail Eve's name and city, may Hashem give you strength and Cheshit to continue your amazing work. Your talent since in the Dorim 51, Tzvi Kurtz. I hope he's not here in Chicago anymore and he didn't show up to the Sium. That would be very bad. Dear Belly, my 11 year old brother Morty Fromer, who is a staunch member of the Shir, and my daughter, keeping up with the Daf. Uh, her uncle is working on joining the Shear so that he can get a Gemara. Oh, her uncle is working on her joining the Shear so that he can get a Gemara for the next Mesechta. I'm glad to report that he's making good progress. We are taking in Lake District in the UK near Manchester on a Cholomite outing. Beautiful places that the island is going to. Look at this this video. Like we had uh, the other Shear we had from Hawaii. A good maid. Chaim Fromer. Here we go. She's almost joining this year. It's unbelievable. Akiva Konigsberg, a proud MDWire spotted at the New York City Auto Show. Wow, memories. I used to go to that thing every Chalamoid. And also to Great America, Great Adventure, it was called. Somebody sent us a video from there. I don't even know if I have it. I remember seeing it in one of the emails. Okay, next time. Rabbi Isai, the coil sponsored from Anonymous from Lakewood, from Sechta, Eli Stefanski. I don't even know how much it cost, from Sechta, but I sponsored it. Maybe it's $10,000 or something. Kedai. Menachem Toporovitz, what? $9,000? I don't remember anymore. Menachem Toporovitz, Menachem Mendel, Shon Ben Yibel, Chaim Yeshua Doiv. The Parnas HaChodesh, last day, Lili Nishma Zechari Ben Moisha. Parnas HaChodesh, the only family, Lili Nishma Zechari Ben Zechari Ben Yibol, Chaim Elio, the one-year-old. 
Paras Chaydish, Lunishmas Chay Bas Yosef, Paras Chaydish, the entire MDY family, Lunishmas Avro Menashe Ben Moshe Aaron, and Paras Ayoyim, Vaishol Jaspin, Yorzeit of Beni Yosef. Wow, Beni Yosef is from the Roman Shol Avro. Uh, hey, non vav mem. What does that stand for? Hmm, got me. Rocha Esther. Yeah, maybe it means like the mother that's who's still alive. No, uh, I don't know. Art of the month for complete reform for Chaim Tzvi Ben Leia. Yishkayach Rabbi is coming out. Most of you were here. Uh, the first year today, I know it's very difficult to come out to Shiurim and it's late at night and, and this and stuff to do. So, Yishkoi, a very nice crowd. We're holding today's Daf Tesvav and we're holding the last, last word on Daf Yudal and the Beis. The Mishnah describes the Mincha when a Saita comes to the Yisamikdash and she drinks the water. She has to bring a Mincha, a certain carbon made out of flour. And the Mishnah goes on to describe different things that we do with the with the mincha and how it's made. So, says the Mishnah, Ma'aleyu u'maktira b'chlisharis. Kayan takes the mincha of the saito and he brings it up to the mizbeach, and he's makter it on the mizbeach, inside a klisharis, inside the holy vessel. Says the Gemara, b'chlisharis makterle. What? You take the vessel, and you put the whole vessel on the mizbeach, Eloheima. Malay B'chlishar is Rashi has a different gear set. I, I think this goes according to the Gears' Rashi. It takes out a few words that a regular Gemara has. You bring the vessel to the Mizbeach, and then you pour it from the vessel onto the Mizbeach. By the way, very, very simple, easy daf. Bar Hashem, again, Mishmach had a lot of Rahmanas on me, on the double, on the two day Yom Taivim, where I had to give three Shiurim before Yom Taivim today, two Shiurim, uh, because the, you know, the Agadita is simple, and today's daf is very simple. We're talking about Saita here, all simple stuff. You take salt and you pour it on the mincha, like you do for all the minachas, you do for the korbanas. As it says in the positive, we also have a minog to use salt on for amaytzi. Now, I know someone, and this person asked me specifically that I should ask and share today, so I'm going to ask. His father does not use salt for his chalas on Shabbos. He wants to know, is, does anybody else have that minug, or it's a minug that was done by mistake? It was a mistake. He wants to know. So if anybody has that minug, I personally don't know anyone like that. If somebody has such a minug not to use salt, let me know, please. So now, you, the way it works is you take the, the barley flour, you put it in a bowl, the kayan takes his hand and chops down into it and scoops up this much, three fingers worth of flour, and he smooths it out, thumb, pinky, one of the hardest things to do, okay, puts it in a klisharis, and whatever's left over in that bowl, the kuyanim can eat. Now, it's not very tasty. So first of all, minol on the chsivik da koinis as koroso uchsivan yisers min amin chol aron elavano. So it says mafurish in the pasuk that the rest, the leftover, the noisar, the the moisar, the shiraim goes to the to aron and his sons. Korba koinis. And then you take the 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 kmitza and you put it on the mizbeach. The market is the market is Whatever you hold, you hold. In other words, the idmar. When at what point can the kain start eating the leftovers in the bowl? As soon as the fire grabs onto the mincha, you need that the, most of the kmitza should be enveloped in a flame. So we learned in the Mishnah that the Kohanim add Gishmak stuff to this. So it's edible, it's Gishmak. They could put wine, they could put shemen, oil, dvash. Typically, th- these are things, these are ingredients you can't put on a carbon when it goes onto the Mizbeach. But you could put it, you could eat it, 
like eating in the base of with you know, meat with ketchup. So they put some 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 honey. My time on my crow, the moshcha. So you see the pasuk right over here. I gave you here, the Pasuk says, I gave you to eat le moshcha. What does moshcha mean? It says the Gemara moshcha means ligdula. For greatness. This is how kings eat. So kings are not going to eat plain flour, water, flour. They're going to they're gonna put something in it. So you're allowed to eat it like a king. The only thing you have to be careful is not to create chametz. Oh, Pesach, chametz. We just had it a week or two ago in Parshas Tzav. This is a puzzle we just had. You can't you can bake it, make it chametz. So what does the word chelka mean? Even the part that belongs to the kayan. Chalkam, so the, the Gemara is learning it a little interesting. Chalkam, their part that they get, the Kayhanim get to eat, even that you have to be careful that it shouldn't be Chametz. Oh. Call Amenachas. So it says in the Mishnah that all Amenachas, every other Mincha besides the Saita, needs oil, the certain ingredients. Back in Menachas, I brought a whole mincha to shear, and we poured it, and we had fun, we did the whole thing, the kmitza. So, a mincha saita doesn't get any oil. As the Gemara of Chal Menachas, Shemin, Levina, every single mincha requires oil and frankincense. Levina, Vayga mincha schaitei, is the mincha of a chaita. So for this, it's kedai to see Rashi, Dibra Maskel, mincha schaita inside. What is a mincha schaita? The mincha of a sinner. What does that mean? Which sinner, first of all? And when did they bring a mincha? So first of all, mincha schaita abo, al-chet, demetam mikdash. If you go into Beis HaMikdash, betuma, you have to bring this mincha schaita. Or b'shuva sa'edus, a false shvua sa'edus, a b'shuva sbitui, and a false shvua. D'chsev ha'asam, v'imloi, tasig yodoy l'shtei tayr. If a person cannot afford two birds, the goyim. So what happens is this is called also minchas oil of It goes up and down. In other words, a, a typical person who does one of these three averis goes into the base hamidus betuma. He has to bring a sheep as a carbon. He has to spend five six hundred bucks, and he gets out of it. But what if he can't afford five six hundred bucks? So then he buys two birds. And what if he can't even afford two birds? So now he's a yarid. He, he starts by oila. He starts by not the carbon oila. Oila means high. He goes from a sheep, goes downward to a bird. And if he can't afford a bird, it goes even more down to simple flour. Who can't afford a little flour? Says the Gemara, the Rahman Amal, Yosem Aleha Shemen. It says about a minchas chayta. Now we're asking the question. You're telling me chayta is the only one that doesn't come with oil. It's not true. You have a minchas chayta that the Torah says mefurish lo yosem al Hashem al yidin lo levaina. You shouldn't put any oil and frankincense levaina into the mincha. It says the Gemara Chikol Makala Menachos Tuni Shemen u levaina. All menachos need one or two things. First, they need Shemen levaina. U boys menachidim u boys soilus. They come from wheat, and they're the finest wheat. In other words, the purest wheat. It goes through a bunch of, um, uh, what's it called? Sifting. sifting thank you. Process. A bunch of sifting process until it's very, very fine. In other words, it's very high quality. So the the mincha of chayta, even though it doesn't require the oil and the levaina, at least it has one of the two. It, it comes from wheat. Mincha soimer, ava bishi ba mincha soirim, mamsh. Talking about mincha soimer that happened what two days ago, second day of Pesach. Mincha soimer ava bishi ba mincha soirim, even though the oimer comes from barley, tu no shem levaina. So you got the one of the two. It's either wheat. Or shaman. 
Okay, so the Omer is not wheat, it's barley, but at least they get Shem and Levite. Uba Geris. Geris is, says Rashi, is the same idea as Soilus. Very fine, very pure. Vizu ain't a tuna loy shem and belay levaida. But the mincha soita has, has neither of these two. First of all, it doesn't have oil and levaida. Uba mena soyim, uba kemach. It comes from barley and it's not sifted well, it's just kemach. Tanya Rebbe Shimon, bidinu shte mincha soita tuna shem and levaida. You should know that at the end of the day, the chayte should bring oil and levaina. Shalla yia chayte niskar. So this is Mendi Auerbach's favorite line in Chas. Usually, he loves asking questions from this line. The idea of that somebody that sins shouldn't benefit. In other words, he sinned, so that's why he should save money and not have to pay for the for the oil and the fragrances. Let him pay. Why is he gaining? A sinner shouldn't gain. There was a, a guy who saw a line waiting for the bank to open. There's nine people in line. He cut the line. He tells them, I'm here first. I need, a, I need to go in first. I was here yesterday, whatever. Some sort of lame excuse. Cuts the line. Everybody's furious. He comes in. And there's three tellers, so he goes to the one on the right, and everybody starts going to the other two. He tells the teller what he needs, the teller says, he starts doing it, and then the teller says, listen, this is my first day of the job, but he's going slow, and then the guy's going sugar. Meanwhile, the other, the other two tellers are knocking out one after another, 10 people, 20 people, and the guy is, finally, the guy is fed up. He's like... Okay, I'm just going to go to the hotel. If you don't mind, I'm going to. He goes to the hotel. As he goes to the hotel, the guy says, "Next time, please don't cut the line." So they ask Rabbi Zilberstein if this is if this is something that's mutter to do, because first of all, he's stealing from his employer. The the, the guy is paid to, to see customers. Why is he giving chinuch now? And should he give chinuch? So basically, Rabbi Zilberstein said it's okay to be mechanach people that are not good and they they cut lines. Etc. Etc. Okay, it was, it was uh, two yeshiva guys that were Israeli guys that came to England, and they heard that in England, if you cut the line, nobody will say anything. So they cut the line just to try it out. Not They didn't want to cut. They just went. They saw like uh, they were in a the pharmacy. There's a line. They decided they went to the head of the line. And one person said a word, and all of a sudden, like the security guard came, grabbed them by the ears, <laughs> and pulled them out, and the whole line started clapping their hands. Also, the English guys, you know, the the numasim, the very proper, but they, they they got a good kick out of that. Okay, my sister come out tell you. Says the Gemara. So the bottom line says Rib Shimon Shlei Choy Deniskar. I guess this is Rib Shimon who likes to be Dorish time of the Kra Shlei Choy Deniskar. Nema Enatuna Shlei Karbanim Hudar. So what, then why? Did the Torah say no oil, no frankincense? Don't let it smell good. Don't let it be good. We want to show that it's not a, it's not a good carbon. When a person is, has tzaras, and he brings his carbon, they need nesachim. Why? Because they're not coming. Why, why, does, a, why does a metzayr bring a carbon? Not for the sin. As the Gemara, any Yivamer Bishmo, Ben Achmeni, Yivamer Biyodeson, Ashivet Varim Negoim Boy. Why does a person get saras? For these seven reasons: Loshen Hara, Ritzicha, Shuashov, Gilarayis, Gases Haruach, Bing Hori, Gezel, Tzarasayin. So, a person who has saras, he did something wrong. So, the car isn't the carbon coming to be mechaper for these one of these averes that he did. Says the Gemara, Hasam Minige Hudi Kaperle. He already had a Kaparo. How much Kaparo does he need? He got Tsaras. Says Rashi, first of all, it's Yisurim. It's very painful, this, this Tsaras. And, but it's also very embarrassing. Walking around with blotches all over your skin and this and that. It's, it's, not, it's not very comfortable. So that is his Kaparo. Like the Chavetz Chaim says, if a person knew, how much kapara you get from bushes, 
he would chase the bushes down. He'd go to get embarrassed. That's what I do every day. You know, I'm, a, I'm a pro at it. So, but you have to know, you have to know how gishmak bushes are, he says. You don't always be right of bushes. So this guy had enough busha, enough yisurim, so that's it. Kemaisi carbon. So why does he bring a carbon? with the kemaisi. He's only bringing a carbon to allow him to eat kachim. Who else brings carbonus like a mitzayra? So we had the list. Do you let us? We're not going to go with her because the Gemara says that she was chayta. She swore that she's not going to have children anymore. She bring carbon. But a zav, what? Zav zava. Very good. Zav zava. They certainly didn't sin. What do they do? Or maybe, maybe it's a part of something, but we don't know what they sinned. So the fact that they, a Zav and a Zav, bring a carbon to the base of Migdash, it's to allow them to eat Kachim. It's not to, to, to be Mechaper and Averi that they did. So the same thing here by, by Mitzvah, it's not to be Mechaper, it's to eat Kachim. El Me'at, Chatas Nazir, Tein Tunan Sochem. So when a Nazir, we just finished Mitzvah, this Nazir. And we know that a Nazir, when he's done with his whole process, he brings Korbanas, and he brings a Chatos, you should bring the wine, the libations, libations, the fish and a Bach. A Nazir, since he didn't sin, so you should add all the good stuff to it. So what's the answer, Abba Yisai? Whoever learned Nazir should know the answer. We said it many times in Nazareth, well, many times, at least three times. But we spoke about it a lot. Stavalok, Rebbe Lozar Kapor. Rebbe Lozar Kapor. The Omar, Nazir Nami Chaitahu. The reason why a Nazir brings Korbanas is because he sinned. What's the Svar of Rebbe Lozar Kapor? Rebbe Lozar Kapor says that a person, what? Right. A person should not deprive himself of any good in this world. Even one item like wine. And he goes on to explain, or in Rashi, the Rishonim, that there's so many Yisurim, so many Chumras that the Torah put on us, we don't have to look for more Chumras and more Yisurim. And he had no business depriving himself from wine, even for 30 days. For that alone, depriving yourself from something that Kosh who gave us Rishos to, to use and, and benefit and enjoy, he has to bring a karma. That Rabbi Gamliel says in the Mishnah that since she, this woman, the Saita, acted like a behema, so she brings a mincha of a behema. What's a mincha of a behema? A mincha of a machal behema. What do behema you see? They eat barley. Says the Gemara, Rabbi Gamliel chachamim, Rabbi Gamliel tells chachamim, chachamim, soifrim, soifrim, you chashim chacham. Hani choliv ad rishana, let me, let me show you how to Say pshat in this. Kimin choymer. So Rashi says that this is like a, a jewel, like almost like a cuffling. I guess they used to wear like a cuffling on the, the top button that buttons the thing. So they put like a jewel, a golden jewel. Like a, Rashi even says the word, interesting. Look at Rashi, the last two lines from the bottom. What do you see? Choymer? Button. So it's a button. Button belaz. I guess button is in French. I don't know. Huh? It's pronounced bouton in French. Bouton? That's the same thing, same word. Very good. Bouton, blaz. How do you say blaz in French? Blah, blah. Bouton, blah. Okay. Vushel zav. Yvald. So let me, let me, let me say beautiful pshat here, says Rimgam Leo. Now what? Tezvav, I'm in the base. How many minutes? 24. Ah, we're doing Givaldi. The Shamiler made the Kaomar. I heard Rameu says, He chilosoi madone oilam, the fichoch carbono machol behemo. Since she fed the noyef, the bad guy, she fed him food. We saw this already. So it's mida connected mida. She fed him, so she gets fed, or she has to bring, she fed him like uh, the best foods, she has to bring. A carbon which is machol behema. Now, yeah, yeah. So first of all, we have to remember, it's very interesting. We're sitting here in the Oimer. The Oimer is made out of barley, as the Gemara mentioned, barley. 
On Shavuos, we bring Shtei Alechem. Shtei Alechem is made out of wheat. So, a lot of the Sfarim say that the Avayda that we have during the Omer is to go from a Behema to Adam. We have to work on our animalistic Taivas and whatever, and, and, and our, yeah, Nisyonas, Taivas, whatever they are, and, and, and go to the Adam. Fine. Well, so nobody interrupts me again. That's Lacha of Ayyileib ben Aliza Simcha Shena Masha and Aliza Simcha Shena Masha by Bracha. That's Lacha of the the members of the HBA group and their families all made. Now, by the way, yeah, so they point out that I just want to show you the, the famous chart that I always show when I say, when I talk about Ramon Gale. Now, People say Rebchaim Kanievsky has, you know, crazy yichos. His, uh, his wife had real mashuyah. She married Rebchaim Kanievsky. She's the daughter of Rebbe the, 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 the mother-in-law of this, the, the sister-in-law of Rebbe Shtema. The kids are, who else? And then her father-in-law was the stipler. And her great-uncle is the cousin of the Look at this chart. It's not normal. Goes from Hillel Azakim. His son is Rebbe Shimon. His son is Rebbe Gamliel. His son is Rebbe Shimon Gamliel. His son is Rebbe Gamliel. His son is Rebbe Shimon Gamliel. Rebbe Yudha Nasi, Rebbe Gamliel. Now, here's the problem. The Gemara says, Rebbe Gamliel said Pshad here. And he said in the name of Rebbe Meir. No. Rebbe Meir lived way after the first Rungam Liel, and he was friends more with the son of Rungam Liel, Reb Shivam Right? He was right before Reb, Rebbe. Reb Meir is all the way in the bottom of the chart in history. Sort of on the bottom. So therefore they say that it must be, I just added, Reb Gamliel, Reb Yehuda Nasi, the author of the Mishnah, had a son, Reb Gamliel. Which is the third Rebbe Gamliel on the chart. So when the Gemara says Rebbe Gamliel, it must mean Rebbe's son, Rebbe Gamliel, which is not so common to talk about. But he heard from a previous generation from a mayor. Okay. That's great. The Mida connected Mida. If the woman was very wealthy and she fed the Nayef a lot of good food. What if she's a poor person? Why should she bring a Mincha of a Elo. Because she acted like an animal, that's why she brings a carbon, the food of an animal. It's me that can get me though. And we see many, many things even today. And today's God, there's a few. I didn't even point all them all out. But different things of Pyra and Yosef and that Samois and all these different things that it's all it's all about me that can get me though. Says the Hilgim Mishnah, sponsored the Nishmas of Ramanasha ben Moshar. The Kayan brings like a vessel, like a cup made out of earthenware. And it would take water out of the kiyar, a chatzilug, and put it into this vessel. So, to show you just what a kiyar might have looked like somewhat, this is a picture from Kol Shon book that I used extensively in Zaltzuma. And if you see right on the on the left side is like water over there. It's interesting. It's a beautiful thing. Stop the idea of Alma that every night, in order that the water in the kiar shouldn't become puzzle balina, anything that's left overnight becomes puzzle. So they would lower the kiar into a well that was in the base amigdash, and the well, the bottom of the well had water, so it was all in, wrapped in water. It's called a muchni, a special device that, uh, you know, worked on a, a pulley system, and they lowered it in. What kind of water was in the kiyar? We're going to see. Rabbi Noemer, Revius. Now, a look was a Revius, a quarter of a look, not a half a look. Keshev Shemayat Biksav, just like this is going to be my in the Gemara later on. How many psukim from the Torah do they write on, on the parchment? And they put it into the water, and they erase Hashem's name. Just like you write less words, so you put less water in there. In other words, how much water? But how much is that amount of water? Is it less because of the lesser amount of words or not?
Nichnas la heichol. The coin goes into the heichol upon a liminoi. Makes a right turn. Umakam hayosham amal amal. And it was uh, one of the stones in the floor. It was one amma by one amma, which is about two feet by two feet. The tavel shashayish was made out of the same marble that the rest of the floor is made out of. The tabas and they had a little ring in it. Let me show you what Rabbi Yoshi did for us here. This is the shayin color. This is the mizbeach. This is going into the heichal. It's not great uh, Menorah stuff, but here he did this himself. The rest is like a program, but over here you can see the the tiles are one by one, and one of the tiles had a ring on it that you could lift it up. Why? Because underneath that, there's dirt. And you have to put dirt into the water. He lifts it up, takes a little dirt out of it. You know, there's a lot of people in Israel that have balatot, and they lift one up, like with a plunger from a toilet. Lift it up, put the cash in there, and drop it down. It's a good place to, to hide cash, until you forget about it. So you take the, the dirt, it's not that you mix it in the water, you want to place it on top of the water. They could see it. Not not in the water, on top of the water. Says the Gemara, This vessel is brand new. The Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuel holds brand new. My time, the Rabbi Shmuel. Gomar, Kli, Kli, Mimitzayr, we have, Gzeri Shavateh, Mimitzayr. Mal, Alon, Cheres, Chadosha, Avkan, Cheres, Chadosha. So the Mitzayr, we know it's a very, very long process, one of the longest processes, if not the longest in the Torah, of he has to bring two birds, and they shift one bird into a klicheres, they take some of that blood, put it on his thumb, on his nose, on, on, on his ear, on his, his big, on his big toe. Okay. So this klicheres by a Mitzayr must be new. So too, by us, it has to be new, by the side it has to be new. How do you know that it has to be brand new by Mitzray? In the Kli, there's spring water, and he shakes the bird, the little sparrow, what do you call them? The uh, little guys, sparrows? Yeah. And then he let one loose. Okay. Again, that was by Shani Connor, as you can see in that he saw in the, uh, he was coming into Shani Connor in the video, in this uh, thing. We'll see it again. So, just like, so it has to be similar to the water. The water, you never did anything with it, no malacha. So this kli is brand new, you didn't use it for anything else. Just like the by by the Mitzayra, it's spring water. Maybe you have to use by the site of spring water. Of course, you're using spring water. Why? Make your Rishmolaimer is of the opinion anyway that what's inside the kiyar? It's Maimayon, it's for spring water. So you are using spring water, it's not a problem. So it matches up. no, it's just regular sink water, whatever. Okay. So you're telling me I'm learning from Mitsuira that by Mitsuira is a brand new vessel. So two by 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 a site, a site is similar to Mitsuira, it should be a brand new vessel. Ekel Mifrah, but you could slug it up, the Xeri Shava. This is the certain chumras that you have by a Mitzari. You have to use cedar and, 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 and haisib and all this stuff. And therefore, you need a brand new vessel maybe. But by a soda, you don't have to use cedar. So you don't, you don't need a brand new vessel. So, here's the pshat. If the Torah would have said, the coin kli cheres, so it would mean, take, take a new kli, but it doesn't say that. It says, the coin, a few words in between, bi kli cheres. Bi kli means in the, not a kli cheres, but the kli cheres. In other words, the kli cheres that we were already discussing before, right? In the kli cheres, what's in the? In the means in the kli that we spoke about before. But I want to tell you to get a kli I say, go get a kli A kli means a new one. But if I say, go 
put it in the klicheres. The means something we already discussed before. It's an older one. Says Rav, the Tan of our Mishnah holds. They don't need a brand new kli. He says, provided that it's not black, that you didn't use it so much, it turned black. But if it's black from usage, psulin, you can't use it. My time. Do me the mayim. Ma mayim shalin ishtanu. Av kli lan ishtanu. It's similar to water in a way. And just like water can't change, you can't change the way it looks. Thank you, Avrami. So too, a kli, you can't change the way it started out. So there's actually a shail in a mikvah. You have a mikvah, 400 people went, to, went into it, an Arabian kipper, and it's turning from yellow to green, all sorts of funny colors. Is that Nishtan of Panav and it becomes also? They say, no, mikvah, it doesn't say that the water becomes puzzle for a mikvah. It says that by, by a saita, it can't change colors. So yeah, mikvah is fine. You're still yoytza if, it, if it's a funny color. By Rava. As Rava Shaila. Nisak Muvik Ziron Lutaik Kishana Aish. What if you have a cleat that's black? There's an old child in the Gemara. I'll give you an example. If you have a Mizbeach and you're about to put a carbon on the Mizbeach, and one stone got a chip in it, a small chip found a chip. Mizbeach is puzzle, and you can't bring the carbon on it. We learned Allah, I hope I'm not making a mistake. Let Allah that since this carbon was rejected for those 10 minutes until the repair was made, so it's rejected for life. Even though you went and you repaired the stone, you smoothed it out, you, you switched out the brick, whatever it is, that carbon is no good anymore. Because it's Allah of rejection. Once it's rejected for a moment, even if you fix it and everything, the, the reason for the rejection is gone, it's rejected. So what about a bayas asrav? You have a kli. It started out nice and white. And then over time it came black. Then I put it in the kiln and I turned it white again. Since it was rejected as black, so I can't use it anymore? Or perhaps not. Even the itchu, itchu, since it was rejected, it's rejected for life. I do more, even the other, other, or maybe no. I was able to get it back to the original color. Now it's a cleat that's white. Toshmar of Lazoimer, eight eras of Ezer Shnitulas, Shehifshil Bahem Kupasa the Hoyer Psulam. I have somewhat of a picture here. A guy has some sort of something on his back. Okay, so he's, he's only that. And he used. The cedar and the high sip as a as a handle to help him out. Okay, you don't see it over here, but right where his hand is, he's using it as some sort of handle there. What does it say? So you can't use that cedar anymore. You can't use the high sip anymore. So what's the obvious answer? You say, oh, you see over here. Once it's puzzle, it's puzzle. But also, hadri umifashti. He put down his peckle, he put down whatever luggage he's carrying, and now he has the cedar and the high sip, it's back to normal. Still possible. No, so what would you say? What's the what's the difference? Uh, his oh see these guys mom they know how to learn. See? How old are you? Fourteen. Fourteen year old Tamil Memas, seriously. He's asking he's saying very good. The Haisa was worked with. There's Malacha done to it. So you can't use it anymore. It says Rashi, Rashi Bavarns that question. And Rashi says, that's not the Pshat here. Because if that was the Pshat, it should have said over here, that was, Malacha was done to it. It doesn't say that Malacha was done to it. So obviously, that's not a consideration. And the fact is, that it went right back to where it came from. The same, it's the same size, the same everything. It's not broken, it's not anything. And Malacha is not a factor here. Nevertheless, it's still possible. And don't tell me it's possible because of Malacha, because it doesn't say it here. It doesn't say anything about a Malacha. So, the Hossam, how do you say it? It says, You're right, Malacha is not a consideration. But there's another consideration. The consideration is that it got peeled. You know, when you use like a soft wood, you put it on your shoulder between your hand and, and, and the package. It gets rubbed out, and that's the reason why 
it becomes possible because it's not the same as it was before. It's missing a layer of, of skin or something. Microscopic? That I don't know. The microscopic, if you can't see, you can't see it. Obviously, you can see. That's the. Well, the something that can use multiple times. I don't know. Who says? Maybe. You know what Hysip looks like? It's very delicate. It's not a. The cedar, I understand what you're saying. But Hysip, it's like a little, small little branch. It's like a flower. Put a flower, any flower, rose. Okay. Uh, on your shoulder and a, and a heavy burden, it's going to rub out a little bit. Not every time. But if it doesn't, you're right. Then it's then it's kosher. The point is, the reason why this is possible is because it's not the same anymore. Correct. There's a change, not not a halachic change of melacha, but a physical change. Says the Gemara, ikluf, it literally peeled. Nichlas la'echol upon eliminoi. Let's watch this one more time. And this is the, the entrance to the Beis HaMikdash. He's coming in. It's going to be flying over the Ezra Snashim. That, that's the, um, the part with the four squares in the corner. And then you see the Shira Malis, the 15 steps. That, that big entrance is Sharni Connor. From there, it goes into the Azara, flies over the Mizbeach. And then all the way in the back is the Heichal, the big, tall building. It's about 200 feet tall. Inside that building is... The menorah that they light every day. You have the mizbeach hazav that you put the k'tayrus on, and the shulchan. And behind that is the kodesh hakadoshim. I don't know. That's how they did it. It's not our program. He didn't build this. He just okay. Let's see it. Here we go. Going right now into shani corner over the mizbeach up the steps into the heichal. It's not beautiful, but it does the job. Here's that little mizbeach k'tayrus. And here is that brick, and he went. He took a right turn. Says the Gemara, Why do you go to the right? You know what Hasidim say. What do you guys? You guys say it also. A yid gate, rechts. If you any have, if you're in the road and you, you don't, you don't know where to go, right or left, Hasidim will say a yid gate, gate rechts. Okay, they took it from this Gemara. What? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a, it's a. It's a, it's the angle. It's just the artist representation. Right. It's the what did they say on the cereal box? Objects it's made, uh, objects may be uh, might uh, appear uh, larger uh, than enlarged to show texture. Enlarged to show texture. Texture. This object was enlarged to show texture. It doesn't really fit into that hole over there. It's just to show you the handle on the thing. Okay. But it's a very good kasha. I like your friend's kasha before better, though. Actually, it was you. <laughs> the same action. Okay. Givaldik. By time of Omar, call Pinoy Shata Poyna Lo Yuel Derchimin. In the base of Migdosh, we learned this in, in Kachim. The, the coin went up the ramp of the Mizbeach. He made a right turn. Everything is the right. But the problem is if you make a right turn, and the next turn is left. And the answer is no. Well, if he's facing the Mizbech, he's constantly going to the right. Okay. But in the Beis Hamidus, you go to the right. There was a, a, a place that was an Amo by an Amo. He takes the dirt from the dirt that's, that shall be. Maybe he could... Just take some dirt from outside of the Bishamikdosh and mix it into the water. It must come from the flooring of the Mishkan. Maybe you could take a shovel and, 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 and pull some dirt out. That shall be. It's there without working. Okay, it's sad. How do you do it? If you can find some dirt, great. If there's a, a season of Saitas and they used up all the dirt, if there's not a lot of dirt, not any dirt, then bring from outside the Beis HaMikdash. What do you do with it? Put it on the floor in the Mishkan. Put it on the floor over there in the Heichal. Wait a few moments and then use it. Fine. You know what? Let's stop over here. Rabbi Sai, have a wonderful day. Thank you for coming out.